Welcome back to Why in the Morning. It's Tuesday in Akama Kawaida. It's Entrepreneurship Tuesday where we get to look at the business world. And today's guest is Peter Osumba, the Registrar of Academics at Zitek University. I'll let him introduce himself. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, my name is Peter Osumba, uh, Registrar of Academics. Zitek University and I'm glad uh, to be in the studio today mm. to have this important conversation yeah, about entrepreneurship and academics. Yes, yes, yes. And I want to think that academics has a role in entrepreneurship. Definitely. Yeah. So maybe you can tell us where you started. How did this journey start from for you? Like your educational background, your how you started, how you started this journey? Uh, thank you. Um, I, I had... Um, I pursued Bachelor of Education at the University of Nairobi as my undergraduate and um, later on progressed to my MBA at uh, that same University of Nairobi, um, Allah biased towards operations management. Uh, basically we say uh, the people get things done. Uh, then uh, currently I'm pursuing a PhD in uh, management uh, in, in business administration again bias in management science which is related to operations management okay. at uh, Kenyatta University uh, in between I did a postgraduate uh, diploma in leadership and governance um, uh, this one I did at, uh, at Zitek University uh, sometimes back and um, now the j my, my career journey uh, I would say started um, um, I would say way before my bachelor's uh, because I always had a passion in um, uh, teaching uh, my, my classmates something or, and after form four I got a chance to actually teach and um, uh, later on when I, I came to campus I, I took up education as you may know that uh, uh, the structures we, may, uh, we, we currently have at high school level are not very very strong to align you to a particular specialization uh, so uh, that's an area which I know the government is doing so much to to uh, grow and to empower the career teachers. So a joint um, campus. Uh, I, I had uh, I had a feeling that I really wanted to be in this area, but I got the temptation also to flow with the fashion there. The fashion then was to do a CPA and become an accountant. <laughs> yes. And uh, I, I tried, but um, uh, I practiced. Uh, uh, accounting uh, during my academic break in campus and uh, that confirmed that I don't need to go that direction so I came in so all along I've been in the field of education I've worked in um, other institutions uh, before coming to Zitek University mm. and dealing with students of course I've done other um, um, I've been in marketing a bit in another organization before I finally settled in uh, career in academics and I must say I'm enjoying this. You're enjoying it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're a registrar of academics. That's yes. a term that I've heard so many times, but the truth is most people don't know uh, what it's all about. Maybe you can tell us uh, some of the duties of a registrar of academics or what it entails. Uh, thank you very much. We are the people who work uh, with the student from the time they are very fresh uh, joining university to the day that they have grown up and graduating. So Registrar Academics basically is in charge of admissions, admitting students at the university, um, academic support and advisory, um, curriculum, or uh, partially working together with the uh, heads of department to ensure that we learn a curriculum that is um, um, useful to the students. Uh, I did mention examinations uh, all the way to graduation. Mm -hmm. So that's what the registrar is in charge of. And also student records. Yes. Okay, so when a student enters your university the first day, so what's the first step in ensuring that this student is actually going to do something that will help him or her in, in the four years and also after the four years? Uh, thank you very much. We, we, we have, uh, when we, during our admission, after admission we give two weeks to students just for career advisory. It's not an issue of joining and going to class. It's a two week of onboarding. Uh, like uh, next week, 
will be starting on boarding for, for, for May Intake. So during this time, the students are free to interact with the various uh, faculty members. But again, our training is anchored on two pillars, entrepreneurship and employability concurrently. So during this time, we, we, we have um, sessions when we take students through the soft skills um, as they prepare to start the academic um, uh, work in, in a normal semester schedule. So we have that mentorship, uh, career advisory, and also exposing them to the world of uh, the, the dual world of academics and entrepreneurship. That's what we do in the first two weeks. And for a student who doesn't even know if they want to be a, an entrepreneur or have a white collar job, how do you, uh, what, what kind of advice do you give to them? Because I'm assuming a first year student really doesn't know where they want to end up at the end of, you know, the four years or after the four years. Someone figures out themselves later on. Mm. I agree with you. And uh, I know when you're in first year, you're just excited uh, about the campus experience. Yes. You want to experience life in campus. And we also take advantage of that when you still have that energy to get to engage you. As you know, the, the, probably you, you realize that the trend of uh, side hustle is, is also really taking root uh, among uh, the, this generation. So uh, somebody enrolling to do IT needs to know what IT entails, the academic part of it. Once you finish and graduate with Bachelor of Science in IT, uh, what is there for you? Um, the world of software development, the world of hardware development. But we also uh, tell you that you can commercialize this knowledge. And that's where entrepreneurship comes in. Where, yes, you can be employed as an IT expert, uh, IT programmer, software developer, but you also developing softwares on the sides for various companies. And that is entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So the two weeks uh, period is meant to work with you through that journey and open your world and, and tell you that uh, you should not waste time here in the campus experience. You can have fun, but you can also be doing something. Mm. Yes. Uh, you you said that your courses are either on entrepreneurship or employment. Will you say that the courses favor uh, white collar jobs more than entrepreneurship? Um, I thank you for that question. Yes, they, they, uh, they, they, they are intertwined. The employment and uh, the, the employability and uh, entrepreneurship is intertwined. That every course you do, how, what is the entrepreneurship in it? First, we have um, a common unit for everybody who is, uh, uh, do, who is enrolled in the University of Entrepreneurship Skills. And w in terms of entrepreneurship skills, I we are currently scaling to a, a situation whereby um, it should culminate into some entrepreneurship project, even a small project of selling probably t-shirts to your, your, your campus mates. That's, that's entrepreneurship. So every course you do, there's an element of entrepreneurship. If you're doing nutrition, how will that, how can you commercialize that? You're doing hospitality. How can you be making cakes for your friends for birthdays mm -hmm. and their aunts and their grandmothers? Yes. So that's how we intertwine it. Mm -hmm. And what role would you say academics have has in entrepreneurship? Um, from where I sit, entrepreneurship, uh, academics has a, a role of preparing a background and um, helping to refine, uh, uh, to help students refine their thoughts about uh, entrepreneurship from a professional perspective. So laying the background. Um, uh, are this, for instance, if you, I mentioned the aspect of each student doing entrepreneurship. So give, um, start the culture. The academic has the, uh, the role of laying the background by starting the culture of entrepreneurship in a white collar dominated um, world. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is it true that uh, someone can be an entrepreneur without, you know, going through school and learning all these skills? Because that's what youth actually prefer right now, that so many people are see kudarao, but they don't think academics has any role in entrepreneurship. So what's your comment on that? Uh, thank you very much. That's like the question uh, that <laughs> people have asked, that do you think at least need to go to school? If they can just run, I I I think um, uh, I would say you are better off, and if you are an entrepreneur who is educated, because they are, you are able then to operate at a different league, and you are able then to also add value to your entrepreneurship projects. You can come uh, to a studio like this and present your concept to the world.
And if you don't have uh, education, probably you may lack the tools to advance your uh, entrepreneurship agenda and also to promote your entrepreneurship uh, business. So that's mm -hmm. what I would say. Mm -hmm. It's very critical. Okay. And yeah. do you think that success in academics has any guarantee that like you'll be a very good entrepreneur if you get your first class honors? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I would, uh, I would um, say no uh, because um, entrepreneurship is also a skill that has to be nurtured but also, it's also it also goes with passion. Uh, you may have your first class but uh, thinking down and going through the hassle of coming up with a concept of a business and driving it through is not your thing. You're waiting for someone to come up with a concept then you can come and manage it yes. or, or go and market it for them. Okay. Yeah. So if the answer is no, that mm. your that how sharp you are in school doesn't guarantee you to be a good entrepreneur, maybe you can tell us some of the skills that you need to have so that you can be a successful entrepreneur. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that question. Uh, that's a very critical uh, question. Um, uh, what w w there are a number of um, I would call them the attributes of an entrepreneur, um, and probably intertwine it with the skills. Uh, one of them is the issue of uh, resilience because some of the business you see, you see here in town have they have gone through a lot of um, resilience and maybe undocumented research. These people going uh, consulting and uh, thinking through how they can come with that business that's very important. Uh, of course, you would also be, you should be creative because you need to create your own space in terms of coming up with in innovative concepts. Um, it's very important to have a teachable attitude that you can learn from a mamboga, you can learn from somebody roasting maize and try to understand uh, how they, they, are, uh, they are doing their mathematics of going to uh, a kulima market to get that maize and how it translates to profit. So you should have that uh, teachable attitude. And in, the, in, the, in, in line with the teachable attitude, you should be able to um, identify uh, mentors people are already doing something around your area and uh, around your area of interest and now probably you can um, um, work with them so that you're able to realize what you want to do. Mm. And of course, discipline, very important, yes. Uh, you've mentioned something about mentorship. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can tell us how important mentorship is in, in school, in entrepreneurship and in finding your way in the business world. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, they say experience is the best teacher. Yes. And that's where uh, mentorship come in because you are trying to learn from other people's experiences. So to me, mentorship is, is very important because you are you are you are you are you are you are able to be introduced to experiences, uh, skills, um, and knowledge that has been acquired by somebody else who is willing to share it. So mentorship is very, very important. Mm. Yes. And did you yourself go through mentorship? Yeah, 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 I've gone through mentorship. I, at, I, in fact, at every level, at every level of, of my uh, career, I've gone through mentorship. For instance, when I joined, uh, I would say, when I was making a decision to pursue my course uh, at bachelor's level, it was a serious struggle. It was a serious struggle. And uh, I had to go to uh, the registrar then uh, of uh, Nairobi University and seek guidance, what should I do? The desire is to do teaching and something that oh, uh, does with nurturing people. Mm -hmm. The fashion is to uh, be an accountant. <laughs> yeah. How do I, my to, and he was able to work with me, he was able to link with somebody who was an accountant and able to uh, navigate my way around. When I was coming to this role actually, I had to, um, I was lucky that uh, again I in my network, uh, I was introduced to uh, a mentor. I uh, remember that, that one I was introduced by my uh, current vice chancellor, Professor Munene, uh, to the registrar, uh, the uh, un uh, University of Nairobi then, the late uh, Mr. Waweru. And um, I remember he, our first meeting, we, we sat at Grand Regency for four hours, and that was impactful. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage um, anybody aspiring to join a particular area, whether it's a trade, it's business, or profession, to identify a mentor. And what are some of the things that I should look for in a mentor when looking for a mentor? What, because there's a list, so what yeah. are some of those things that I should look for in a mentor? 
I think this person should be um, knowledgeable or an expert expertise in your uh, area of interest. This person should be willing to share this knowledge that they are having. They should be eager about growing other people. Uh, they should be able to have a very respectable relationship with you, respectful relationship uh, with you, because this is an amateur expert relationship. So it's very important that you have respect uh, with that. And uh, I think uh, they are, you should be able to identify by their values. Yes, uh, that's what I would mention. And is it, uh, is it a, a must that a mentor be someone who is doing something that I want to do? Like, for example, if I want to start selling shoes, should my mentor be, you know, a big shoe seller? <laughs> 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 or I can choose someone from another industry? Uh, thank you. Of course, if you get that such direct relationship, it will be the best. But what are you looking for when you are starting a business, or let's say you're selling shoes? You, 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 you're looking for business mentorship, not necessarily uh, mentorship in the area of selling shoes, because you're also likely to grow into other things. Yes. Yes, so I would say that you just open your world. First of all, it's important to make a decision that you want a mentor. Then try to identify your goals. What do you want to achieve with this mentorship? Then from there, you'll be able to uh, uh, identify with what that person is offering. So I would say you, you, you just need to open your world, but align your objectives to the person you are looking up to. Mm, and yes. apart from having a personal mentor, mm -hmm. does the school system provide mentorship to the students? Yes, uh, if, if, if you, you may have heard of uh, a project that the government started in uh, universities and technical institutions called the Office of the Career Services. Luckily, we were already uh, into it, where this office is in charge of mentorship um, and is also in charge of linking the students to the industry with the aspect of employability as well as the aspect of entrepreneurship that you have a student who is um, uh, doing a project. Uh, for instance, we, we current, we, we currently we have, a, uh, if I may mention, a particular student who is uh, uh, into fashion design. And um, what the institution uh, did, and I think you may even know him because he's a big name, it's called Ashok Creations. Oh, yeah. So where, what, what we did during that time and realized that he had interest was to link him with uh, one of the uh, the, the people who are in charge of organizing Mr. and Ms. Zitek, and this person worked with him, and right now is a big shot mm. uh, in terms of uh, uh, designing suits. Okay, yeah. so maybe as we wind up, maybe you can tell us uh, if the mentorship and the career advice on entrepreneurship and employment ends after graduation. Like, do you guys follow up on your students after they graduate? I think, yes, we have a tracer study uh, that we do on our, our on our graduates, um, and th this study seeks to identify a number of things. One, um, upon graduation, how long do they take to either get employment or entrepreneurship? And for those who um, pursue, for instance, entrepreneurship, how do they grow into that line? Is this something they just did a side hustle, or they're able to grow into, uh, develop as entrepreneurs? Mm -hmm. And again, we give them opportunities. For instance, our procurement uh, department is, is more than willing to work with our own students to supply us. So we work with them, we do business with our students. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, maybe as we wind up, you can advise a student who is watching you right now or a person who wants to get into entrepreneurship. What will be your word of advice, especially during this time where we are facing uh, COVID-19 and things are not so easy? Thank you very much. Uh, my advice to our dear uh, viewers and uh, especially young people watching is that uh, mentor mentorship or identification of mentors has become a primary requirement for either entrepreneurship or for career uh, growth. So identify a mentor. So make that decision that you want a mentor. Uh, identify a person who fits your profile or your expectation. Um, approach them so that they are able to um, guide you. We have so many people willing to share knowledge. So we want, I want to assure you that you won't miss somebody willing to work with you uh, as a mentor. Uh, from there, I, I believe the mentor will help you to navigate uh, around 
help you, help you, uh, the mentor will help you to make decisions. The mentor will also train you. Um, even if you have to, if you come to issues of looking for jobs or looking for entrepreneurship opportunities, and mentors have already developed networks. So just tap into the existing networks and you'll go far. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for creating time and thank you for your words of wisdom. Thank you very much. Okay, so that was Peter Osumba, the Registrar of Academics at ZTech University, and you should all heed his advice on getting a mentor.